Welcome to the Fabric Podcast, where we explore company culture and how it scales as a company grows. Brought to you by the team at The Receptionist, a bootstrapped Denver-based software company. Each episode of Fabric will set out to uncover unique and uncommon answers to the question, how do companies of any size create a culture and core values that employees actually live out? On this episode of the Fabric Podcast, we're joined by Piper Bursmeyer, a psychiatric NP in the Pacific Northwest and one of the founders of MedRx Partners. She also happens to be a client of The Receptionist. So on this episode, she talks about how she and her partners are working to change mental health care and how medication management happens. They're taking a really bold approach to providing great service for their clients. Piper shares about the company's values, including making it happen and following through, being efficient, effective, and using kindness and compassion. She also talks about how technology fits into this business model, not just how the receptionist is used, but how they gather information from their clients ahead of time. It's really important to her and the other founders that they are turning mental health care on its head and providing services for people who really need it. So stick around and enjoy this episode with Piper Burzmeyer of MedRx Partners. Piper, thank you so much for joining us on the Fabric Podcast. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's jump right in. Tell our listeners a bit about MedRx Partners. How did this business come about? Yeah, so we are a brand new startup, but um, it actually uh, came from my private practice. I had been in private practice for about five years, and I've always wanted to expand and increase access to medication management in the Vancouver, Washington, and surrounding, surrounding areas. And to do that, it's not an easy task. And uh, so I had had this dream and just had thought about it, and it, nothing had really ever come to fruition. Uh, and then two of my other business partners in a separate company that we own, I had kind of just been telling them what I was trying to do. And they said, well, we're working part-time at another clinic doing med management. Why don't we join together and do this together? And I said, okay, let's do a second company that's separate. So um, the two of us, Julia Swafford, Brendan Rowe, and I, and then we added Rhonda Rowan, who's another psychiatric NP, we basically got our heads together and said, okay, how are we going to change mental health care? And so that's how it started. And so we filed our business license in June of 2019. Wow. So this is brand new. Congratulations. Thank you. And I love that, that you say you want to change mental health care, because I think that's such, it's such a hot topic right now as it should be, because mental health really is so important. And whether the issue is access or comfort, I love that you're just trying to, to change up what that is for people. Yeah. It's, you know, I I would say that uh, it's easy to say change healthcare, but it's such a big animal and it's it's so hard to actually put that into action. And so we really brainstorm from the very start what we would do to make that happen. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's not easy to do um, when, when things have been done a certain way, but we're really proud of what we're doing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about what it is that you're doing and how the work that you're doing is so different than the rest of the mental health care space. Yeah. So, you know, I can only speak, I've only worked as a psychiatric NP in Oregon and Washington. So I know the Pacific Northwest really, really well. So I can't speak to the whole country. Uh, Psychiatric NPs are not independent in all states. About 22 states uh, were independent and it's growing, um, but there is quite a bit bit of a movement to restrict our care to, and that's another political topic. But why I bring that up is because within the confines of Oregon and Washington, I can kind of explain uh, the limitations in mental health care. So as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, uh, we pr- provide medication management. We are also trained in therapy, but many of us don't provide therapy because there is such a high need for medication management. So a, a psychologist or licensed professional counselor or social worker would refer their clients to us for medication management. And we often work with them while they complete therapy and we are doing the medication side. So traditionally in the Pacific Northwest, most business models are a therapy to med model, which means that to get to a medication provider, you have to see a therapist first, and you have to establish care with that therapist. Uh, it sounds good on paper, but it just doesn't fit the needs of a lot of clients. So we're talking crisis clients coming out of the hospital, crisis clients that can't get hospitalized because there's no beds, uh, people that are you know been hanging out in the ER for a couple of days who are suicidal, or people who have moved here who need care and can't find it because they have to establish. Uh, those are just kind of a handful uh, of clients that. Um, we're being served. You know, what happens is these therapist schedules get so full that they're out months and months and months. And then it's months and months and months to see a psychiatrist or, or an NP. So that model, in my opinion, 
uh, doesn't work for everybody. And I think there is an incredible amount of wonderful therapists in our area that have nowhere to send clients. Um, they have full books and they don't know what to do. And they send their clients often to primary cares and pediatricians who are doing their very best. But in my opinion, their education is pretty poor in mental health. You know, in medical schools, they do a pretty terrible job. And continuing education, there's not a lot of requirement, which I think should change, but they're just hobbling along um, trying to get through it. So, so we changed that model. So we are a direct medication management access clinic, which means that you could call up and say, I'd like to see a psychiatric NP for an evaluation. And we say, okay, what's your insurance? Let's, say, let's make this happen for you. Um, one of our values is make it happen and follow through. That, that's a big one for us is that we want to, uh, when we say we're going to do something, we're going to take care of you, we're going to make it happen. Uh, and, and that is really important to us. Um, and so when you call, we make sure we can, you know, make sure you're someone of a good fit that we can meet your needs to make sure that we can do what you need to do. And if you'd rather see a therapist, we can refer you. If there's other things you need, we can refer you, but we can take care of you most of the time. Um, so that's a really big difference between us and majority of clinics in the area. We also use technology because uh, there's a massive amount of paperwork and background that has to be covered in appointments. And so oftentimes in that appointment, the first appointment is spent on history, which is, is important, but we're not getting to the nitty gritty of helping that person in their current state and the pain that they're suffering from. So we use a medical record system called Valent, V-A-L-A-N-T. That's a behavioral health uh, electronic medical record. And when the client walks in to, to their appointment, they've completed a clinical history form and seven measures. And these measures are basically tools that providers can use to help diagnostically and to also get a picture of symptoms. Uh, and why that's important is that when that client's walking in the door, they actually are already feeling understood. They're not feeling like they have to spend 45 minutes going through the trauma of their past because they've written down what they ultimately want us to know. We can explore and get into it, but it's not feeling so daunting for them. So it's a little bit more comfortable. And that's a really important piece that using that technology, it may appear a little bit more hands-off, but actually we have found it to be a great tool because we're more efficient, which is another one of our, our values. You know, we're very efficient with not only our time, but their time. You know, life is busy and it's hard and uh, we want to make sure that we hear our client from the very beginning and we take care of their needs as soon as we can. That we, when we create a treatment plan, it's actually going to be pretty right on from the start. You know, we're not, you know, guessing. We're not, you know, going to have two or three more appointments before we make a treatment plan. We're making it happen. Yeah, I love that. You know, you talk about this use of technology and it's not meant to replace the person or be hands off, but it really complements what you all are able to do as individuals. And that's so yeah. important. And like you said, the efficiency, because when someone is in need of mental health support, mm -hmm. they really need it. You don't want to yes. have these barriers that make it even harder to do what's already probably feeling hard for them at that point. Oh, because I mean, imagine meeting with a stranger and having to bear your soul. And right. you know, we, we, again, this again may come across as hands off, but we are also changing it because, you know, we, we don't wear the therapist hat. We make sure that these clients understand we are medical. We're here to diagnose. Mental health is real. It's a brain condition. It's a chemical issue. We validate that. We make sure they don't feel crazy. They don't feel like something's wrong or they're stupid or they're broken. We're here to talk about a symptom just as if diabetes or asthma or anything like that. And so when you, when you create that lens, not only for the mental health provider, but for the patient, you're able to stay efficient, but yet effective. So we're yet another one of our values of, is effectiveness, is being able to create that treatment plan that meets their needs. Um, and it sounds like, okay, well, every provider is probably doing that. But we really truly believe that, you know, we, we're great diagnosticians. We really hone in on those symptoms and make sure that we create a treatment plan that fits their needs as rapidly as we can go. And so this idea, there's this fear socially that, you know, well, I don't want to medicate or I don't want to over medicate or, you know, but at the same time, when you're under treating someone and they're suffering because they may have three or four different diagnoses, but yet we have this model of monotherapy, which again, I don't think is very um, appropriate or accurate. I think some people suffer unnecessarily. And so really meeting the person where they're at and, you know, if a person had high blood pressure and high cholesterol diabetes, Imagine the gaggle of meds they would be on, right? But in the right. mental health world, we have this notion that if they're on a cocktail, so to speak, of meds or a potion or whatever words you want to use, depending on the client, you know, with kids, they like that. 
Mm -hmm. um, really getting that. I call myself a mixologist and Mm. that is really setting us apart uh, for most providers is making sure that we get that mix that they deserve um, so they can manage their symptoms. Yeah. I love that. One of our values is being bold and this feels very, you know, bold and different. And even though you are based in the Pacific Northwest, I think this is a fantastic conversation because mental health and mental health needs exist across the country. So I think at the very least you're shedding light for what people can look for if they feel like they're needing some mental health support, that it's not, it doesn't have to be this traditional path that, you know, we're sort of told to believe this is the only way to get your needs met. So I feel like we've already answered this, but why do you feel this sort of space is just so necessary for people? Yeah, you know, I think that, um, you know, mental health has always been there. It's nothing new, right? I think that we've come to more understanding of how it exists, why it exists, what the, what, what the source is because of fMRI scans, you know, we were literally mapping mental health. We understand how the brain lights up differently in ADHD clients and non ADHD clients, you know, or how schizophrenics have different brain structures. I mean, we understand that now. And so it's taking out this notion that it's, it's a choice, but yet even with all this science, even with all the science, there is still so much shame and there's so much uh, of a taboo effect. Not only is me as a provider, I mean, I get judgment being a psychiatric NP, but my poor clients, you know, it takes so much guts to show up to our office and sit on our couch or sit in our chair and, and talk about these things. And so we are trying to make it more medical uh, because we have the science to make it medical, but also because that's how it should be for some clients. You know, some clients want a more therapeutic, therapeutic approach and want that, that, that provider to wear both hats, but we actually don't believe that you can be an expert at both. We don't believe that you can be a fantastic therapist and be in the know with all the continuing education and be a fantastic prescriber. So that's why we heavily rely on our community of therapists to kind of have that symbiotic relationship. And so mental health is important because the brain is an organ. It's no different than anything else. And it's about time that we start treating things really young, where when the brain's developing and molding, why are we not taking care of things when when kids are eight or even five? I mean, there's parents that will say, holy cow, she's been anxious since she's been four. I mean, we've known this about her because genetically both parents have anxiety. And so, you know, hopefully one day we'll get to a time where we could use maybe a diagnostic test where we can prove to people, uh, even when I get people stable and even when I, they're, they're functioning better than ever before, they still have this pressure. When can I get off my medication? Yeah. And so it's, it's heartbreaking to be honest with you. And when they decide to taper off and they unravel and they have this grief of, wow, I, I really do need this. And, you know, we sit in that grief, we process that grief, and then there comes to a level of acceptance and also some gratitude that they have a solution. And so it's this beautiful process that we, an adventure that we follow our clients along with. And especially when I see a lot of kids and teens, and when you, you see this transition in their age and of acceptance, and grief. And, um, it's beautiful, but it's actually really yeah. hard too, as a prescriber, because we care deeply for our clients. And we know that they probably need this medication and they have to do it themselves. And so there needs to be a space in mental health where we help people along this process. Uh, and we do it with compassion. So another one of our values is kindness and compassion, you know, making sure that people feel cared for and that, you know, I have to remind people that, I mean, this sounds so obvious, but in my, I've been practicing for 10 years and I've had to say to people, I have morals, I have values, I have kids, I, I have to look at myself in the mirror and in no shape, way or form would I ever do something to you that I would ever put you in jeopardy, not only just for my license, but because I'm a person and right. I care for you. And they're kind of like light bulb moment because it's this idea that, you know, um, yeah, we make money when we, when we prescribe, but I, I have no desire to destabilize someone, right? Because if, None of my clients ever got better. I, I don't actually know I, if I can do what I do. It's just too hard. So we take great pride in focusing on remission or dramatic improvement of symptoms and doing whatever we can to get there, including nutrition and sleep and meds and therapy and kind of that mix. We believe in that holistic care, which is what NP is really special. Yeah, well, and it, it's clear just in hearing you talk that those values that you shared about, you really, you believe those and you put that mm-hmm. into practice with your practice and the clients that you serve. So that's amazing. We, we love to hear about that. So let's shift gears slightly because I think, yeah. you know, like you said, going into um, like a mental health space, right? They've already, you know, gotten over that barrier of I need to call someone. 
you know, I'm feeling a bit uncertain. They filled out their paperwork and now they're coming into this space. What yeah. sort of environment did you want to create for your clients that would meet their needs on their mental health journey? Yeah, you know, that, that's an interesting one because we, we went a very different approach and we've had very strong opinions on both sides from clients, which has been really fascinating to, to, to experience. Uh, we have a very like um, clean and crisp and bright office, you know, being in the Pacific Northwest, it can be dark. And so we have mm. white furniture and really light colored walls and a lot of greenery. So our, our theme is more water. So we have uh, pictures of uh, ocean or mountains with water. So a lot of, you know, plants and water and white furniture, but it can, we've been told it's somewhat clinical too, but that yeah. also made me proud because I wanted someone to feel confident when they came in that we knew what we were doing and we could help you. Um, because, you know, most medical clinics are very clinical and very cold. And on the mental health side, it can actually go to the other extreme where it's actually right. like somewhat unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. They, they want people to feel, yeah, they want people to feel comfortable. And so it can go to sort of too comfortable. So I love it. That's a really important distinction that this is a medical facility. You're giving yeah. them help. You want it to be an inviting place, but also one that creates confidence when yeah. you walk in the door. So I could see how that would be a sort of a tricky, a tricky line to, to straddle a bit. Now you mentioned how technology is involved in terms of yeah. getting their, um, their paperwork done ahead of time. How does a system like the receptionist fit into kind of this whole business model and your goals? Yeah. You know, we really love it because, um, you know, part of, um, mental health care is that shame feeling or that embarrassment and, and, and we, of course, don't want our clients to feel that way, but it is what it is. I mean, there, there's so much of that. So we thought of a way to make things more discreet and more streamlined, again, efficient, right? So going back to one of our values of when they're established, so not when they're brand new, but when they're established, uh, they're able to walk in, walk up to that iPad, click on their provider and sit down. You know, there's no chit chat. There's no standing in line. There's no awkwardness. There's no, you know, calling out someone's name. The provider's not walking out calling someone's name. It's very discreet. And it doesn't mean that we are feeding into this idea it's a secret. It's not a secret. It's just that we don't think it's necessary to disclose people's information. Uh, and we also think it's important that our receptionist, our, our human receptionist, is able to do the human interaction, not be stuck checking people in or out. So not only do, does the receptionist check people in, but our providers are checking them out in session. So they're rescheduling at the end of session with the client because that provider knows that person's schedule and their own. And so it's that, you know, from, from start to finish, we want clients to be able to have that really clean experience. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you have to clarify our human receptionist, right? And I think that's, you know, sometimes people think, oh, is the receptionist, our visitor management system going to replace the person? And we say, no, oh, no. it doesn't have to. It can really be this nice complement and enhancement. And like you said, allow your person at the front desk to do the things they really need to do and yes. not have to feel compelled to put someone on hold because someone needs to check in or yep. feel like they can't give the level of service and care to the person standing right in front of them mm -hmm. because someone else needs to check in. And not that the person checking in doesn't need help or assistance, but it's yeah. just nice when, like you said, it can just be discreet. It's quick. It's efficient. Like you said, one of your yeah. values, they sit and people are getting their needs met across the board. So we we love that, that it just sort of fits in so, so well, nicely. Well, clients feel autonomous. I mean, they get to yeah. control their care. I mean, you know, they're coming in and checking in and they're not having to, you know, talk to a receptionist and navigate insurance. I mean, we're able to do that behind closed doors. Uh, or if they have a balance or, you know, they have payments or whatever, they're not doing any of that in our, in our waiting room. And I, I think that that's that high level of care that we've been aiming to do, which is, again, sets us, you know, apart from most clinics. Right. And I can imagine too, for someone coming in, you know, maybe still early on in their journey, they're feeling a bit uncomfortable to just have that be quick and easy. And like you said, it's discreet and they can handle it. It's, it's not clunky. It's not hard. It's like, Oh, I accomplished something. Let me go sit down. And things yeah. are just taken care of for me. And then on the provider side, you know, our providers are able to you know, have their alerts based on their own needs. So if someone wants a text or an email or both, it's their choice. And it also really helps that provider manage their own time, right? So they're able to get that alert and be able to see like, okay, you got my clients waiting or yeah, I've got some time or whatever, however they want to navigate it. And I love that our psychiatric NPs also feel more in control of their schedule. 
because that's important, you know, for them to be happy too, because we want them happy as well. I mean, we have to take care of our psych and peace just as much as we care for our clients. Absolutely. So as we wrap this up today, I mean, so much fantastic information about what you're doing. Um, I think really inspiring for hopefully the future of mental health and hopefully people are out there Googling, is there anything like this near me? But are there any final thoughts for our listeners related to your values or your culture as a company that you'd like to share that we haven't touched on yet? You know, I would say that um, I have a dream to, to, you know, and my part, I speak for all the partners, but, you know, I will speak for myself when I say this is, you know, this should not be, we should not be kind of a random clinic who's doing this. I think this should be more across the board. I think that the standard of care and the quality of care and the use of technology can all improve across the board. And I think that medicine can be innovative and, 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 and be able to make progress in so many ways. We're, but in mental health care, for whatever reason, we are so far behind in so many things. And I don't really know why, because we've got the people, we've got the smarts and we've got the people motivated, but why we're not taking those steps and treating mental health care like a medical thing, I, I don't know. And I really hope that this inspires other psychiatrists and psychiatric NPs to kind of take a look at their office and what can they do to serve their clients in a different way and take care of their providers. Because, you know, I have a whole other thing that I talk about when I, when I interview people about what we do for our psychiatric NPs and how we take care of them, which is not being done anywhere. And so that to me is, you know, I want this to be just the beginning. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I'm not sure how to replicate it. I'm not sure what to do. I love this business management side. And I, I love, you know, talking on the phone with Psych and P's and getting all excited. But I hope this becomes more frequently accepted and yeah. um, something that excites other people too. Awesome. Well, we hope this is the first of, of many sites and just the beginning of your, you know, your growth from here. So thank you well, so thank much you. for joining. Thank you yeah, for having thank, me. Of course. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks, Piper. All right. Bye. On behalf of the team here at The Receptionist, thanks for listening to The Fabric Podcast. If you'd like to know more about what we do, go to thereceptionist.com, where you can watch webinars, read blogs, and even sign up for a 14-day free trial, no credit card required. See you on the next episode.